I hope my words on this Shabbat help us find a measure of clarity in the midst of this past week's pain and heartbreak. The other day, a friend said, it's terrible what happened in Israel. And I said, yes, it's devastating. And I'm deeply pained and saddened. He then added, I guess they've been fighting and killing each other since the beginning of time. And I looked away in bewilderment. And I did not, to be honest, have the strength to confront him. But I wish I had said, actually, what has been happening since the beginning of time is that anti-Semites keep trying to kill us. And sometimes they succeed in murdering us. In every generation, in every land, we have been forced to confront this sad but inex inescapable truth. Rarely have I felt so alone in that moment or in this past week. Hamas celebrates the murder of Jews. They do not want to make peace with Israel. Saturday's massacre did not happen because Israel is occupying the Gaza Strip. They are not. Israel withdrew its soldiers and settlers from Gaza in 2005. Hamas's quarrel is not with a controversial settlement built on a West Bank hilltop mentioned in the Bible. Kibbutz Be'iri, for example, the community that lost 10% of its members, 100 people out of 1,000, were murdered on Saturday. That kibbutz was founded in October 1946. It sits within the borders of Israel's internationally recognized boundaries. Hamas's aim is the destruction of the state of Israel and the murder of Jews. I cannot fathom why this is so difficult for people to understand and comprehend. I cannot come to grips with the fact that people can be defending these murderers. Supporting Palestinian rights should actually mean opposing Hamas. Last Saturday, our people were intended to celebrate our beloved Simcha Torah, the day of our great rejoicing. All we wanted to do last week was sing and dance and celebrate. And that is the most important reason why I am here on this Shabbat. I will not allow the terrorists to rob me and of us of our Shabbat joy. What I wish I had said to that friend was, yes, no one seems to want to let Jews live in peace. Actually, it might be better to just say, to just let us live. Then again, I was heartened by President Biden's words of support. He said, and I quote, this attack has brought to the surface painful memories and the scars left by millennia of anti-Semitism and genocide of the Jewish people. So in this moment, he went on to say, we must be crystal clear. We stand with Israel, and we will make sure Israel has what it needs to take care of its citizens, to defend itself and respond to this attack. There is no justification for terrorism. There is no excuse, he concluded. I am buoyed by the United States' government's efforts to lend military aid to Israel. And I have other friends, of course, and many of them called me and texted me offering support. Many are not Jewish, and they remain equally horrified by what they read and saw, and so wanted to lend a comforting shoulder to the friend they know has deep connections to Israel and I sense their love and concern, and it does help. And their words briefly temper my feelings of abandonment. There has also been a significant outpouring of support from world leaders, and yet, and yet these words so often seem tempered. I don't recall, for example, 
when the UN, UN Secretary General offered support and condolences to the United States after the terrorist attacks of 9-11. In the next sentence, adding a warning about the need for the U.S. to exercise restraint when going after those responsible for the attacks. My teacher, Yossi Klein Halevi, writes, Israelis will tell you, we don't need the world's sympathy only when the violated bodies of our family and friends are being displayed to cheering mobs in Gaza. We need that sympathy most when we attack those who've carried out these atrocities. If you can't distinguish between an army that tries to avoid civilian casualties and a terrorist group that seeks to inflict them, then spare us the condolences. And I would add, don't say simply that Israel does not intentionally target civilians. Say instead the following. Israel's goal is not the murder of as many Palestinians as possible. Its armed forces seek not so much the destruction of the enemy, but the defense of this simple idea, let us live our lives. Of course, we should be saddened by the deaths of innocent Palestinians and the destruction of homes and the upending of Gaza and its residents. Israel will make mistakes in its prosecution of this war, but its actions are justified and its intentions are pure. Hamas is largely to blame for these events. The IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, seeks not the destruction of Gaza, but the preservation of Israel. And that, in a nutshell, sums up the conflict. Make no mistake about this terrible fact. If Hamas could, they would murder all seven million Israeli Jews as well as the two million Israeli Arabs who built, the, built their lives for themselves in Israel. They would murder every Jew throughout the world if they could. That is their stated goal. And Saturday's massacre should wash away any doubts about Hamas's intentions. In our hour of grief, we say together our people were murdered and our people are being attacked, and our people are now traumatized and terrorized. And this is not the moment of disagreements or even debates about what went wrong. This moment calls most of all for solidarity and unity. We will carry this grief with us for a long time. And next year's Simcha Torah will still be tinged by memories of this year's massacre. And every celebration will be colored by a measure of grief. The psalmist sings, you turn my mourning into dancing. And even though that appears now upended, and that joy, the joyful dancing of Simcha Torah is now our grief, one day I am confident because as much as I have studied our tragedies, I have also come to know our triumphs, and our dancing will be restored. I have faith that our hope will triumph. We are the people of hope who, against all odds and expectations, return to the land that once exiled us. That, of course, is the meaning of Israel's national anthem, Hatikva. Odlo avda tikvatenu, our hope is not yet lost. Not in 1945 and not now in 2023. Liotam chovshi senu, to be a free people in our own land. We are the people who know how to hang on to hope and don't ever forget that. And don't ever forget that now we must also hang on to the unity of the Jewish people. We will triumph, we will live, and once again, we will dance. <laughs>